Since the year 2000, Nigeria's commercial capital and Africa's sixth largest economy, a Lagos state has been going through landmark policy and infrastructural transformation to a modern city. Driving this transformation is also on one side is the Lagos Economic Summit, a private sector-led participatory forum, also known as Enigbeti. Enigbeti is the first institutionalized economic forum by any state in Nigeria and is an ingenious social economic apparatus that has contributed significantly to the evolution of Lagos State into a major economy in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, with expanding potentials at the just concluded summit for the year, there were exchange of premium ideas from both participants from the public and private sectors uh, towards a broad collaboration that will set Lagos State on the path of greater accomplishment. I'm not going to be doing this alone. I have joining me live in the studio uh, to translate some of the resolutions from this summit into concrete deliverables. He is the Commissioner of Information and Strategy, uh, Mr. Benga Motosho. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to have you on Business Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, let's start on that note. A lot of deliverables there. We saw resolutions that is gathering, particularly with Lagos. What more are we expecting after Ingeti? Well, like, uh, first let me just tell you that uh, Ingeti is not uh, a talk shop. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a foundational platform for us in Lagos State to be able to come together with the private sector and then be able to put on the table mm -hmm. so many programs, projects, and uh, concepts that can, on which we can now lean to move forward in uh, so many areas of uh, uh, our economy uh, and all, all the things that uh, uh, an average Lagosian expects from us and the leadership role that the world expects Lagos to play. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very key. Also looking at the speech of the governor, I saw that this issue of diversification was touched on uh, looking at agriculture. I know for time we had this Lekki Kebi thing, Lake Rice and thing. What more are we doing in agriculture uh, for the prospects for Lagos State in moving be doing better? Yeah, in diversifying the economy of Lagos, agriculture is going to play a major role. Wow. That is why Lagos State is, uh, for example, looking at the motor rice mill. Mm -hmm. The motor rice mill before the governor, Mr. Baidis Onwolu, came in, uh, was about 10% completed. Today now we are looking at uh, a matter of a couple of months, three months, four months for the completion. It's a, going to be delivering about 200 million metric tons of uh, rice uh, yearly. And uh, the, if you look at that chain of people producing paddy, people involved in logistics, then creation of jobs, and then engagement for everybody, and then cluster uh, industries around that particular location, you can see that uh, it's going to play a major role in diversifying the economy. So it's also, take for example, the, 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 the uh, Lagos, uh, the largest uh, consuming economy yeah, in Nigeria. Of course. Uh, I mean, 80 percent of uh, almost everything that is uh, produced in Nigeria is consumed in Lagos. Take for example, uh, cattle, uh, 80, uh, at least 50% of all the cattle coming in from uh, the north mm -hmm. and then uh, other countries, neighboring countries, uh, Lagos consumes at least 50% of them. But there has not been any major attempt to harness that uh, uh, the, uh, that that, that uh, potential for us to be able to improve our revenue, mm -hmm. but that is now going to be a thing of the past mm -hmm. because now we are going to have standardisation. Mm -hmm. It's not just that you are going to bring cattle into Lagos and just begin to sell. They will be gathered in a place where they can be fattened and then released, and then we can have uh, improved abattoir. We can have uh, so many other things that will make the red meat chain to become a more. Uh, uh, a, a more of a, a revenue honey mm. uh, entity than it is now. And then talking about vegetables too, more than 50% of vegetables produced in any part of Nigeria is consumed in Lagos. Yes. And then you find that if you go to all the local markets, uh, some of these vegetables they just get spoiled and nobody has done any major thing for, the, uh, uh, for keeping them. And uh, Lagos is now go coming up to say that, well, even if you buy off these things from these people, you will f find a way of uh, keeping them so that uh, you can have the best fresh at any point in time. Mm -hmm. And doing that, you create more jobs and then you have more revenue. And then if you look at fish, for example, there has been, we have some of the best uh, coastal, coastal belts 
in the world. And I mean, people even talk about uh, Nigeria's um, tuna fish. You go about on the street and find a tuna fish produced somewhere else. Whereas we have more tuna fish in our uh, ocean here than we have uh, fish that Lagos has comparative advantage. Mm. It's not uh, being uh, exploited as it should be. But all of that will change, change. now because of all the plans that we have for that industry. We find out that our local fishermen, they have a lot that they are producing, but they are not coming together for them to be able to find the kind of markets that they mm. should find. Mm. Now we are going to get them off takers who can buy all these things off them and then be able to pay them commensurate prices for their sweat. And on and on like that, the Lagos is going to be at least having its own uh, fishing arrangement whereby you can begin to produce fish. And then the vegetable that I spoke of, even though we don't have much land to produce vegetable, yeah. but we can use uh, you know, the greenhouse uh, kind of uh, agriculture system for us to produce uh, as much vegetable as Absolutely. we can so that we, too, we cannot just become uh, a kind of uh, consuming uh, economy, and we can also produce some vegetables. So Agric is going to play a major role in diversifying the economy of Lagos State. Hmm. That, that, that's very interesting. One of the objective of Themes Agenda, which we all talk about, and everybody knows that the government has been uh, in tune with, is the state of infrastructure and improving the infrastructure. I know of almost all the roads in Lagos constructions are going on. Now, how, what, tell us what initiative are also in place to make this easier and more safe less as we move on talking about infrastructure development in the state. Well, Lagos is uh, doing a lot about infrastructure development. If you look at our budget for this year, it's uh, 60, 40 yeah. in terms of uh, in, uh, capital and uh, uh, um, capital and then um, um, what's it called? Uh, we have capital, capital expenditure, expenditure and, and uh, recurrent. recurrent expenditure. Yes. So what that means is that we are going to put more money into capital projects. Yes. And that Clearly. already people are talking about Lagos being a huge construction site. But I can assure you this year it's going to even be bigger than that because we have so many things that we are going to be doing that we are even started. The regional road and then the Lake Air Expressway, hmm. which is being constructed now, and then everything that we are doing now to start the Fort Milan Bridge. And then Lagos has over 6,000 roads. And of all these 6,000 roads, we have fixed as many as over 400 of them, 400,000 of them, 400 of them. And then we will continue to fix roads. We will continue to invest in building more schools. We will continue to invest in building technological hubs. We will continue to invest in everything that can make new hospitals that can make infrastructural development of Lagos top notch. Hmm. Let's also look at attracting investment before we move to also something very important which I want you to talk about. But let's also look at attracting investment in the state. Are we also making the state conducive for businesses to come in? We know that Lagos is key in the ease of doing business initiative of the federal government. Well, Lagos is doing a lot of things to uh, make businesses uh, attractive. Hmm make businesses to come to Lagos. We have an office, for example, that the basic thing that it does is to help businesses that are coming to Lagos. We don't need to be your partners. Mm -hmm. You can be mostly private sector people that are coming to Lagos. But one thing you can be sure of in Lagos is that when you come, we will guide you. We will lead you. We will support you. If it's uh, to acquire land for you to do your business, we are going to do that. It's for you to be able to get the permit that you need to get. We are going to do that for you. And a lot of that is uh, going on as I speak with you now. Hmm. Great. Now, before we go to other, other things, which we will touch on COVID and all of that, that you were offered by the government, what are the plans with regards to reopening uh, the Lekki Togate? We saw that that happened at the panel just for the LCC to even go uh, assess the level of damage and get some figures out. And we saw a repair, we saw what happened. Take us through what is actually on ground and how do we make this seamless, as easy as we can? Well, first let me just uh, correct a kind of a misconception about what the panel said about uh, Lekki Toolgate. Lekki Toolgate was never shut down in the first instance. Good. I mean, if, uh, as I speak with you now, thousands of vehicles are passing through the place. So the place cannot be seen 
by any thought of imagination to be a crime scene. A crime scene is a fenced off and nobody goes there. But Lekki Go toll gate has never been shut down. And all the panel said is that the company should go back there and assess the damage and see how it can resume its business. And in my own view, that company itself, SEC, is a victim of everything that happened in that place. Mm. And even though you can say that the toll gate symbolizes everything that is wrong with us, symbolizes the fact that if you start something, you must know that it's going to end. The fact that, uh, I mean, anything can spark violence so long as it continues for so long. Because our young people, we supported them in the protests that they were doing, and nobody asked them not to use Lekki Toget as uh, their seat of a protest. But the problem was that uh, they tried to shut the place, the road, and nobody could pass through. Many people suffered, they couldn't go to get to the hospital. And we felt that that was bad. So Lucky Toil Gate was never shut down. It was a destruction that made the company to pack up business there. And then the company went to the panel to say it wanted to go back there. And the panel said, you cannot go there, like three, four times. And when the panel was satisfied that the forensic audit of the place had been done, the panel now asked the company to go back. But People are saying, some people are saying that that is wrong. They have failed to forget that here is a company that uh, has about 500 workers working for them. Indeed. And then they have, been, they have not been paid since last year. And apart from that, they are dependents. And the company itself, like I said, is a victim of whatever happened in that place. So I do not see why we cannot understand one another and say that, well, two wrongs don't make a right, like a concession company can go back to its business. Mm. The issue also of debt, even in all of these things, because you know that debt servicing and all of that, even by the LCC, how, how are they coping with all of these figures? Well, LCC, as far as, as I know, uh, is owing a lot of debts to local lenders, to foreign lenders. I, I think as of uh, January, is uh, owing like 11.6 billion wow. to, to, to local lenders and over 31 million dollars to foreign lenders. And the thing that people don't understand, I mean people who are saying that SEC should not go back there, is that uh, if we renew on paying these debts, it has a lot of implication for the business community. There is no way you can go and meet all these foreign uh, lenders again and say you want money. Or even the local lenders, they'll be wary of lending you money. And they can say that an incident can happen and they will be, a company can be asked to pack up because something has happened. Even when no logical conclusion, yeah, no legal reached. conclusion has been made on it. So I feel it is something that uh, we have to look at very closely. We cannot uh, cut our nose to spite our face. Uh, we, uh, and we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. We have to look at it and say that, well, there is no point throwing away the baby with the bathwater. If we say something has happened there, and there is no logical conclusion about what happened, allow Lekki Concession Company to go back to its business. Because nobody is thinking about how that road was before Lekki Concession Company borrowed money and moved in and smoothed it up and expanded it and it becomes something that people are proud of. And all of the things they are complaining about that uh, since they removed the toll gate, there has been no traffic jam at that place. That, that's not true. There has been no traffic jam because people have stopped doing school runs. There has been no traffic jam because people are working from home because of COVID-19 yeah, protocols. No there has been no traffic jam because we have done a lot of junction improvement uh, projects in that place. The first and second round about yeah. and even up to yeah. this they've been removed they and the place up. has been expanded. Yes. So I do not see why people are now saying that if uh, like a concession company returns to the place, traffic jam will return. I, I, I'm sure that by now, the company will be thinking of how to improve its uh, tolling system in yeah, the place and bring more. a better tolling, tolling solution to the place. So I do not see why we have to say that Lekki Concession Company should not return. Mm. It's also a victim of whatever may have happened in that place. There has been no logical conclusion of what happened, who did what, who did not do what. So, I mean, they also have to look at it that this is not supposed to be an emotional issue. Mm -hmm. It's a logical issue. People are working in that company. And over 60% of those people working in that company, they are our young people. And they are families to feed. They have dependents. So mm -hmm. I do not think that uh, 
we have to say that Lekki Concession Company should not return. Hmm. I, I'm looking at the human rights aspect of it. The way Nigerians or Legosians will say they want their rights protected. While some were well, protesting on that very day, we saw some arrests and all of that, and the state government promised to wade in to check all of that. How well has that also been, been checked for the few people that were arrested and well, released? As far as I know, all of the people who were arrested, Mr. Bayede Sonwolu, the governor, ordered that same day that they must be released. And he ordered the commissioner of police to go and probe whatever happened at that place, mm -hmm. and that no Lagosian must suffer human rights abuses under his leadership. And I think the commissioner of police did that. And I am sure by now the policemen who are involved in uh, such uh, uh, behavior must be, uh, you know, Facing the law. Facing the law. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't. What, what about a lot of speculations also about funding? You've mentioned some saying that uh, SEC has to service local and international lenders. Well, there are a lot of other issues we read in the newspaper. Can we just clear the air on some of this um, monetary thing, particularly with regards to some ads? The, the, the MD of LCC said clearly that there is no way someone will use their facility and they would expect them to pay. I think there needs to be a little bit of clarity in that. Yeah, they, they, there has been a speculation and misconception. Yes. And uh, I think some bitterness about uh, the company's doing business with uh, uh, LCC. Uh, unknown to those people, there are about five people who have advertising rights at that facility. Five companies, hmm. at least five of them that I know. And the company that they are talking about is even the last company to join the business. And they are saying all over. Uh, the social media that SEC has been paying that company and the money has been going into the pocket of the owner of the company. And I feel that it's not logical, it's not, uh, I mean, simple rule of business, especially in advertising. I provide you a facility, <laughs> you bring your materials to the facility. Why will I be the one to pay you again? So it is that company, if they check well the statement of account that they publish in the social media. Is that company that has been paying like a concession company and not the other way around? So I think it's all about uh, bitterness, it's all about emotion and mischief, mm -hmm. which is not good. Hmm. So well, let's now look at more level of engagement now with the state. Are you planning more engagement? Because people need to get enlightened and understand all of these facts so that they can allow uh, seamless operations. Because uh, you see, this is piling up, this is money. Well. What we are trying to do is to meet uh, the stakeholders. The people in uh, Lekki, for example, people okay. living in Lekki, they have uh, come to say this is what they want, this is what they don't want. There are plans to talk to them, to make them see reason. That, I mean, this is uh, purely from a business uh, point of view. Yeah. I mean, if you are looking at it like logistically, nothing has been said to say, to, to hold Lekki concession company back from going back to that facility. All they have done is that they should go back and look at the damage with their facility, look at the, uh, uh, what they can do with their insurance, what to do with their workers. They need to give their workers hope that it's not the end of business for them, that they will come back, mm -hmm. and their dependence too. You know, so I do not feel that there is anything that needs to be done that will not be done. Engaging the stakeholders and talking to them, and whenever we need to make a case like this, I mean, I will show up there to go and make the case that Lekki Concession Company is also a victim, and Just like it also are, too. has rights. <laughs> it also has rights. True, true. It, and it's not true. going to support brutality. And that the government that all of us have, the government of Mr. Baide will we never support police brutality in any way. If you recall, Governor Sohul was the first governor to join the protesters twice and he addressed them and he took all their grievances to the president and as far as i know even before he left for abuja all of the people were arrested at that time were released and then all the things that they were talking about that could be done immediately they were done and there were some of those things beyond the powers of the state government. government and then that's why he took their case to abuja but then, look at what happened after that. Mm -hmm. The energy in Lagos, the kind of carnage that we saw that's uh, beyond the belief, unimaginable, indescribable, the kind of war that Lagos had never seen before. So nobody wants this kind of thing to happen again. That is why the engagement will have to continue. True. You know, True. we believe in dialogue, we believe in peacemaking. 
Mm. You know, it's a good way to let, let's wrap up this way. You know, everyone is going to see the commissioner information in Lagos. I would like to hear something. What more should we expect moving on in 2021? COVID has come, a lot of challenges, but Lagosians, resilient people, they are still moving on. What more should we expect from the government as we move on in 2021? Well, Lagosians should expect from the government better performance this year. All of the projects that we said we were going to do, we are going to do. Lagosians should expect that. Uh, in the coming days, we are going to start. In fact, we have started building the new Massey Street Children's Hospital, wow. and wow. it's going to be the biggest and the best wow. in Africa. Wow. We are going to start the research center in Yaba, mm. IDH Yaba Research Center. It's going to be the biggest we in Africa. Set for any, any more pandemic or anything. So that if there is any <laughs> pandemic that is coming again, yes. I mean, we will not be looking up to yeah. India, we will not be looking up to UK yeah. or US or Vaccine. Yeah. We are going to be able to produce our eyes. Yeah, that will be better schools in Lagos. We are going to build more schools so that we can get all our children into schools. We are going to have technological ops so that our young people can begin to look ahead and see that there is a future for them in Lagos. We are going to have more industries so that our young people can have uh, jobs. So all of the things that Mr. Sonolo, the governor has promised, is going to do. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner. It's great to have you on the show. You're spending your afternoon with us. We really yeah. appreciate this. We know your schedule is very tight. But for you coming, we appreciate this. And the message, of course, has been passed. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah.